Unsyndicated presents. Off the air with Sean Belegian. What is up? Glad you can join us on a Sunday night, wherever you may be. My ni- name is Sean Belegian. Uh, joined by, we haven't talked to this guy in a while. He's my friend. That I haven't talked to you. But you've ignored me for weeks. Weeks on end. I, don't even, I, I just isn't. happened on here randomly, and there you were. <laughs> so I take my chances. Uh, uh, woo, You're a busy man. You're hard to nail down. Tigers with a big win today, man. And they Cork. knock off the Twins. Cork. You like that. You love that pork in your face. I want a period of time, and I, I'm just going to get right into it because I, I know, and, and for people that haven't checked this out before, check this guy out. And I say this with respect. We are, we'll be ripping on each other soon enough, but he's one of the most passionate, diehard fans I know, and that's why I love talking with him, and I think you guys will enjoy some of what he has to say. Mike, I want to get to the point where it's not a chore watching this team. And it, it, it's yeah. been that way for so long. And you'll have these little periods where it's okay. And, and so far this year, and I know what people are going to say, and I'm one of them. You know what? Okay, they're off to a good start. Let's see what happens. All of that. Okay. They're only four games out. They're only half game out of the wild card. They're over 500, all those things. This lineup in particular is is just not good and such a chore to watch man well the, who they add billy butler what's this guy's name but what is it bubba kennedy but B- bubba trammel do you remember bubba trammel don't act who like you don't forget, who could forget? No, okay what is, is it really buddy kennedy is that the guy's name bubba kennedy buddy, buddy kennedy whatever the hell it is. absolutely they that's what they everybody. needed they needed that chole they the buddy showed everybody that's exactly what it is no, but it's, no, I mean, it's, seriously, yeah. it's it's arduous, dude. It really, I mean, more often than not, it's arduous. And you're only going to continue the eighth inning heroics for so long. This team right. loves the eighth inning. That's just the way it is. It, it just doesn't make sense that that's going to continue. Let's be honest. The starting pitching is pretty good. The bullpen's been really good. But they're still missing that bat. And I, I mean, unless you're going to start calling the kids up from Toledo, that are performing, which may not be that far away, honestly, with Urshela now on, you know, IL. Um, Jace Young is off to a really good start. To lead. They've got some stuff down there. They got that uh, Malloy kid. I mean, they don't have a ton. I mean, no superstar prospects, but Jace Young might be a piece that they could add relatively soon to that lineup that could help produce. There's just, you know, there's just some guy in that lineup. You're not afraid of him. There's nothing in that lineup that I, you know, you're afraid of as a major league pitcher. Riley Green, nice player. Am I afraid of him necessarily? I don't think so. I mean, Torkelson's been a disaster. He had a good day today. Uh, Baez is showing signs of life, I guess. I mean, he's getting on base. He's getting a few hits. I don't know. I, I think you can kind of chuck that Jack Leiter start in the trash. That That doesn't count. As far as I'm concerned, he was god off. He was throwing batting practice the other day. So to come out, you beat Minnesota, direct divisional competition. They look worse. Their lineup might be even worse than the Tigers. Isn't so, that amazing? There's some concerns there. Cleveland looks good. Um, they're, they're like 16 and 6 or something. They're, they're doing well but under the radar. Mm-hmm. Nobody's talking about them. But the lineup, you need more offense. And I don't know if that's going to come for the trade deadline or, like I said, if you're calling kids up. But you're going to need a jolt in that lineup because there's not enough. There's too many holes, too many rally killers. Play Kerry Carpenter every freaking day, by the way. Uh, by Why the- is he only playing against right? Play that kid every day. He can agree. Couldn't play agree him more. every day. Give him a you, shot. You and I were texting each other about that yesterday. And, and yeah. I understand. Listen, I'll be the first guy. I, I've said it for years. I, I think. This town has a real problem putting simple size into into perspective. I mean, we, we've talked about that so many times over, over the, the last 10 to 15 years. O- okay, this is a guy that has shown he can hit. Like, yeah. I, I'm sorry, let, let's go until he shows he's not going to hit. Right. It reminds me of those Granderson years where 
he was playing every day. And then they started to have to platoon him because he just forgot how to hit left-handed pitching. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you recall that, they would oh, do that in like eighth or whatever, and he just kind of lost it. This is the opposite. We've seen Carpenter hit lefties before. Just let him play. You see, we see what he can do because your other op, Matt Berling, you know, these other platoon outfielders, they're okay, but they're not special. Carpenter might be good. Like he might be a legitimately good hitter. And all of his numbers are showing that OPS over 800 every time out. You know, I think he was 811 last year. I checked like 15 games in, it was at 811 again. The guy yeah. gets. He's, he can hit for power. He scores runs. One of my favorite things, and, and I'm going in the way back machine, but you said it, so you open up the door. I want to take you back to that day that the Tigers traded Curtis Granderson. And for two days, people lost their collective minds. Mm -hmm. And I, I like, like, seriously, for two days, people lost their collective minds. Well, Isn't that was, that yeah. Isn't that hysterical? When when you look at that now, okay, and, and yeah. to me, I don't think it took a rocket scientist at the time to say, okay, I understand what Dave was doing. I get it. I, I understand what Dave was doing. Mm -hmm. But now, I mean, that deal was unbelievable when you think about it. Yeah. It, it, I mean, aside from the fact that Granderson went to the Yankees and hit like 50 freaking home runs over that right field fence. But eventually, you know, it, it did pay off. You know, in the end, that with Scherzer and everything, it was a good deal. But he was a, he was just one of those Detroit guys where the fan base is going to overvalue him because he's a nice guy and, you know, media friendly and everything like that. So I think people were more upset that our guy was, was being dealt at the time, which is usually how it goes around here. It has nothing to do with whether the guy can play or not. Well, and as you know, as we as we've heard so much already this year, let's let's be honest. I mean, it, it, the amount of support that we show a particular player, it directly correlates to how well that player's going to be. It is amazing right. to me how many people, in, in particular, are, are are still going to bat for Hop. And 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 again, in the interest of being fair, it, it, is it? total flatline or anything like that no you brought that point up but my goodness gracious how can you go to bat for this guy we gotta give him a chance it's a new year and all that stuff it, it is amazing to me mike how how people just fall back on that and 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 mm -hmm. play that game of well we have to show them that we love them yes because how hard I root has a direct correlation to how well this <laughs> plays. And oh, or, man. It's that ball flowing away. Yeah, that's, well, that's the difference. There's, there's what happened at, with Trey Turner last year. He got off to a horrible start for the Phillies. I don't know if you recall that. Yep. And then they, the fan base, instead of being typical Philly, they decided, okay, we're going to cheer like crazy when Trey Turner comes up. And we're going to do the opposite of what everybody thinks we're going to do. And we're going to support this guy. And he eventually broke out of it because he's, he's freaking Trey Turner. He's not Javi Baez. Okay. These are two different conversations, but Turner was just in a slump. Javi Baez, his entire approach is dog shit. And it has been for what, over two years now, um, unfortunately here. And then, you know, our, our old friend, RIP, Al Avila handed Javi this four-year extension, which is a total train wreck. And. Let's be honest, even if Baez somehow manages to hit 250 with 18 bombs, that's not going to be worth the $25 million he's getting paid. And this is the other part of that conversation. Well, he's already taken up $25 million of the payroll anyway, so you might as well root for the guy and hope he does well. It doesn't matter what I do, right? I'm not some moron that's thinking, oh, if I'm nice to Javi Baez at the ballpark and give him little golf claps, maybe he'll, he'll get back to the 25 homer guy than he was for the Cubs. That's not happening. And it has nothing to do with whether we're booing the guy or not. If anything, a guy like him, you would expect him to get more pissed off about people booing him and maybe light a fire under his ass. Instead, he hears a little bit of negativity and he's running around the bases after his first home run doing the Hogan ear thing. What are you doing, man? And how many times is that going to happen in this town, by the way? How many times is a player on, from this franchise going to mouth off to the fans or give him some kind of gesture. Joe Nathan, remember that one? Okay. Everybody was all over Joe. Uh, Tyler Collins, remember Tyler Collins? Did he give the finger, the finger. to the crowd? Yeah. Is that what that yeah. was? Goofy so, little so, sentence. Yeah. yeah, so so he gave him the finger and then Nathan, he did one of these, right? Wasn't that, didn't he do yeah. one of yep. those? Yep. It's like, 
that seems to, I don't know, it seems to only happen here for some reason. Like, are these guys so used to being coddled here that the second they hear any form of negativity, because they're not getting anything from the press and the media is not coming after them at all. So is it that, are they so in, ensconced in their little bubble that the second they hear some negativity from the fans, they're like, wait a minute, this isn't what I was told. I, the fan, I was told from the media, the fans love me. Lynn Henning told me that, oh, I'm, I'm the greatest player to ever live. And I'm going to, after my contract, I'm Jabba Chamberlain. I'm going to sign one for $80 million or whatever. I don't understand. But it seems to only happen here, often. It is, you know, honestly, Mike, I think fans are so desirous of a winner. I, I really, I've said this for a long time. I think that, that fans are so desirous of a winner that whether they want to admit it or not, we have, and I say collectively because I've been guilty of it at, at times too, okay? I'm not pointing the finger at everybody out there. We have lowered our expectations for a player so far, and we're doing exactly what I talked about five minutes ago, um, we're using small sample sizes and make them speak for the large, okay? Yeah. And and listen, the road is strewn with the carcasses of players like that the last five years. I know I always give I give Shep uh, the business about Akil Badu. It, it just how this guy was put on that pedestal that he was put on, I'll never understand it. And yeah. and even when now in in fairness that. First year he wasn't bad, and you're like thinking yeah. to yourself, as a rule five guy, my good, yeah. he can go like this. We might have something there. He didn't go like this. He went like, and then he went like that again. But the die had already been cast, and right. people were already talking about this guy as if he was something he wasn't. And and that's been my whole issue with this rebuild. I mean, yeah. People were talking up guys before they even got here. And you're mm -hmm. still hearing people make the excuses for tour. You still are. And the problem is, is every now and again, he'll mix in a day like today or right. the time out or, well, remember what he did in the second half last year. You just mm -hmm. can't look past those numbers, et cetera, et cetera. And that's where we are. And, and that's why this, this franchise continues to be in this just horrible level of mediocrity. It really is. And unfortunately, it's it's the same thing with Mize, more or less, because he was a number one overall pick. And up until this point, it's obviously a bust. Now, whether that's his fault or not, whether that's due to injuries or not, doesn't matter. Okay, it was. Um, but that's the same thing. If he goes out there and gives you five and a third and gives up two runs, people see, see, it's like, wait, hang on. I he was it. the num he was the number one overall pick. You Your got standards it. are incredibly low for a number one overall pick. And that's the same deal with Torque. What were we sold on with Torque? Well, he was going to come in, hit 265, 270, hit 30, 35 home run. He hasn't done that yet. Uh, maybe one day he will. I don't know. But it's been a while. And I don't think he. I don't think he's ever going to be a 250 plus hitter as far as batting average. I know, though, okay, we don't care about batting average. That's fine. But he's on base is, eh for a number one overall pick, we were sold a lot more, especially for a number one overall pick that played college ball. It's not like you drafted him out of high school and said, oh, okay, we're going to, he's going to develop him over time. Like you did with Riley Green, different story, but you got to get more out of these guys that you built your foundation on in the draft because they're not going to go sign anybody in the lineup that can help. I mean, their best free agent uh, signing Mark Canna, that's fine. Good, good major league player gets on base. You know, good enough. I'm sure exactly. he's a great guy. I'm sure he's a hell of a fella. Is he ever going to win anything? I don't know. He, Mark Canna should be like the sixth best hitter in a championship level lineup. And he's probably their best hitter right now. Aside from Carpenter, who doesn't play every day. Um, Parker Meadows is just painful. Oh. There's, there's no other way to say it. And, and I'm sorry. It has been four years of people talking about Parker Meadows and, and those guys literally dropping their pants around their ankles, in particular at, at West Michigan. I, I mean, it's painful to watch. Forget about looking at the numbers. And, and, and if you look at the numbers, uh, they aren't exactly pretty. He Right now, I'm, I'm not making this up, he's got a slugging percentage of 180. Think about that. He's got a slugging percentage of 180. Okay. Cool. Sounds good to me. The problem is this all, this all went sideways when Riley Green got hurt. Yep. When you, could no, when you could no longer trust him to play center field anymore, 
if he were healthy coming out of last season and he, you could still count on him playing center, I think you've got more flexibility at those corner outfield spots where you maybe went and signed someone else. Maybe you did go upgrade in those quarter outfield spots, but because he couldn't play center anymore, you got to plug him in left. You got to figure out who's playing right. You got to move some parts around, you know, you sign Canna, say, okay, he'll play right. But yeah, Meadows is not, He's not it in center. And I don't know what they're going to do about that because they don't have anything else right now ready to come up and help. So are they going to make a trade? I, I don't know. Because they're going to, let's be honest, in this division, they're going to hang around. They're not going to get, they're, they're not going to be down like 10 games or something by July. That's not no. happening. No. Um. So are they going to be buyers at the deadline? What are you going to sell? What do you have to sell right now? You have some, a, a couple pitchers in the minors. You're not going to sell uh, uh, Jackson Joe. You're not trading him. You're probably not trading Jace Young. Right. You're just going to have to start calling guys up. It's really that simple. So, and you've got you've got nothing out of Colt Keith so far. Not not much. I mean, he's not hitting for any power whatsoever. This is another guy we were sold on. He's going to come up. He's going to play well. Out of that, the lineup out. needs a lot of help. <laughs> yeah, the lineup needs a lot of help, and I don't know where they're going to get it from before they would be able to make a run. Uh, I want to get through some comments. Uh, a guy you and I did a show with uh, many years ago, Jeff Moss, said, what in the world? Todd Losey said <laughs> Higginson hit 400 when we cheered him on endlessly. Yes, it worked. Uh, it worked. <laughs> uh, Rizzo said that this Mike guy must not watch New York sports because they are way worse than us. Um, so are Leaf fans. So. Well, I'm not saying the, I'm not talking about the fans. Okay. I'm talking about the player reaction to the fans. Obviously, New York fans are worse than us. Philly fans are worse than us. Chicago fans are worse than us as far as being tough on the players. I'm talking about the players having complete rabbit ears and reacting to those fans. And being protected. Let's let's be honest. I mean, that's the other part of it. Yeah, they're being coddled by the media. Whereas in New York, Philly, Chicago, those media guys are going to go after them. No doubt about it. Uh, Nick said players giving Detroit fans crap. Rich asks, is that a jet box hat? It is, Rich. Yes, it, it is. is. It is. Uh, Rizzo asks, Sean, I have to ask. Mike, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you this, okay? Um, yeah, you're coming over. My friend is coming over to watch some hockey play. I, I can't wait tomorrow. to just slide over and just gobble your meat tomorrow. It's going to be magical. Uh, you said we lowered our standards here, but when is it appropriate to start putting pressure on these GMs? Iserman, has been here Ooh. five years and zero playoffs. It's a great question. It is a good question. Uh, Mike, I know that you've followed me and you've listened mm -hmm. to me, and this goes to Mike Botch, who I'm talking to, and, and Mike Rizzo. If anything, I would like to believe that I'm consistent. I said five years ago, mm -hmm. and I say again today, and my tune has not changed one time in these five years, okay? This is a five-year plan. The right, clock right. doesn't even start till 2024. Nobody wanted to hear it three years ago. Right. Nobody wanted to hear it two years ago. And I know for a fact none of you want to hear it today. And I can't right. say that I blame you. He took over an absolute shift. Yes. Right. Period. He did. Okay. And uh, again, I know what everybody does. And I have to keep bringing this up. Everybody compares what he did in his first five years in Tampa to what he didn't do in his first five years in Detroit. And, right. and it is such a simple answer, and I'm not trying to be condescending. Wouldn't life have been a lot easier if you had Mo Sider and Lucas Raymond five years ago? Right. Wouldn't life Huge have difference. been a lot easier? When he was in Tampa, he inherited a yep. young Victor Hedman and a young yep. Steven Stamkos. Yep. And for the record, I'm not saying that Mo Sider is going to be Hedman, and I'm not saying that Lucas Raymond is going to be Steven Stamkos, but the last thing a Detroit fan wants to hear is patience, okay? Yeah, because of we, we, we live with, uh, uh, Botch, you know this, the, the Al Avila <laughs> sunshine and lollipop, <laughs> Joey Blue Sky, right? when, yeah. I mean, there were people that were admitting victory last year. Wow. <laughs> Al sure showed you guys. I mean, that that's the kind of stuff that you that you had to deal with. This was different in, in mm -hmm. hockey. I understand if you, you wanted more this year, and, and the, the wings have to be held accountable for collapsing the way they did make. Right, that's, yeah. But, but, 
the clock didn't even start. It didn't, it doesn't even start until after the 2024 draft. If we're having this conversation a year from now, there might be some problems. And I think there should be problems, but trust me when I say this, there's, there's a reason why it's called a five-year plan. And, and they just weren't going to be ready. It wasn't about getting in the playoffs. It was about rebuilding what was replenished and, and getting the Red Wings back in that position where they're going to be year in, year out. Right. And developing and then making those strides. And I think it does hurt a lot more that they did collapse down the stretch. Because I think people's no hopes, you know, your expectations are obviously you're rising during that run they had uh, earlier in the spring. And then they're thinking, okay, we're back. We're growing. We're getting better. Let's just get into the playoffs. Who knows what's, hap- what's going to happen in the NHL playoffs as an eighth seed. You can win the whole thing. Who cares? And then to miss out, you know, by that little shred and totally fall apart during the last few weeks, including what, getting your ass kicked by uh, Coyotes, what, twice down the stretch? It's like that, that can't happen. And that's probably the side of a, a younger team going through some stuff. And, you know, it's, that can't happen. You got to finish the job. I want to get your thoughts on two pitchers in particular, in particular pitcher that I, I mm. honestly, one of the most absurd things that I've heard in a long mm. time. I think you know where I'm going with this. Mm-hmm. There was a particular longtime baseball writer in town that said, and I'm not making this up. You can go back and look at the tweets. He said middle of March, maybe third week of March, that Jack Flaherty was the best one season free agent signing, maybe not just with the Tigers, maybe with anybody. I can't believe Jerry Green said that. I, I, that's, that's blasphemy. Uh, can I tell you about our friend with the wealth advantage group? You are an amazing human being. Thank you. Thank you. you know, I say this all the time. Um, you know what? We're having a blast doing this and the best way you can thank us. Well, watch it and all that stuff, but, uh, support those who support us. And my buddies right there have done a great job of that. They've been with us from day one. And if you are ready to take charge of your financial future, look no further than the Wealth Advantage Group located in historic downtown Northville, owned by those two guys, the Handsome Brothers, with over 20 years of industry experience. They understand that your financial goals are as unique as you are. That's why they offer personalized expert guidance to help you navigate the complexities of financial planning. Now, whether you're saving for retirement, getting ready to sell your company, or already in retirement, they can help guide you through every step of your financial journey. They work with clients throughout all stages of life and have clients in over 20 states. The investment world is a complex one, and if you are ready to start taking your finances more seriously, it's time to work with some experts. Reach out to my friends at the Wealth Advantage Group at 248-773-8574. That's 248-773-8574. View their website at www.thewealthadb.com. I want to get your thoughts on Kenta. What was two years, $24 million? And, and yeah. Jack Flaherty, one yeah. year, $14 million. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Rizzo said, as a fan of all four teams, quote, even the Pistons, I'm just frustrated. I never thought I'd see the day the Lions are the most well-run franchise in town. Isn't that funny? You're and absolutely it's, right. It's inarguable. Like, it's even, not close. Not even close right now. It's not it's even not close. close. It's not yeah. even close. No. That's yeah. why, Mike, I've always said this. I, 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 and you've heard me say this a thousand times. And I think guys like you and I lived through it with the renaissance of Michigan State football under Mark D'Antonio. Mm-hmm. I refuse, refuse to believe in these people that incessantly talk about fill in the blank sucks and always will suck. I refuse. In my lifetime, I watched the Detroit Red Wings go from arguably the worst franchise in all of sports. They were a disaster to the model for, you know, a long period of time. I watched the nothing Golden State Warriors become the model in the NBA. You get the right people in place and let them do what they do, and and you can change you can change the franchise uh, the fortunes of your franchise in a heartbeat. Um, yes, somebody said, you know who? Yeah. Um, Jack Flaherty was arguably the best free agent one year free agent signing, not just for the Tigers, but um, in in Detroit. And again, in the interest of being fair, after he gave up that bomb, what was it Friday night? He settled down. He pitched well. He probably deserved a better fate. I think one thing that we haven't even talked on is the adventures in fielding, how bad this team has been. 
And and I mean, really, it's 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 bad news bears shit, quite frankly. But when you go out and you get a guy like Flaherty and you get a guy like Kenta, golly gee, fans, we're just bad for expecting more. Well, I don't I don't know why they signed Maeda. Why? Matt Manning is down in Toledo making no money. He's doing fine. Like he can do what Maeda does, if not better, for one tenth of the cost. Why? That's what I, I just, I have a very, like, did, were you counting on Flaherty not being ready? Like, what happened there in those conversations? Why did you need to rush out and go get Kenta Maeda? For what? You knew Reese Olsen had the quote unquote stuff. I know you hate that word, but you knew Reese Olsen had the stuff to be probably part of the rotation coming into this year. Maybe you were iffy on Mize, I guess. I don't know, but it's really weird that we're still sitting here and Matt Manning's in Toledo. He's good enough. Is he going to be great? I don't think so. But is he a manageable four in the majors? Yeah, I'm a decent team. Sure. Why not? So I don't, I, that whole thing, when you were quote unquote pitcher rich in the minors in the last, let's say three to five years, right? You would, you would say that with Jackson Job and Mize and Manning and Fiedo and all these other names that we've heard, you had enough talent there. I don't know why you had to go out and pay Maeda two years. One, maybe that's fine. Maybe that's a conversation worth having. But it's a guy with injury history. It's a guy that consistently gives up bombs no matter where he pitches. Why did you sign him? Because now you're obligated to run the guy out there every five days because you're paying him $12 million yep. a year. Yep. So that's the only reason that Manning's not here. So are we going to work Manning into like a trade for a bat? Are we going to move Olsen? Something's got to give because... At some point, you can't keep letting Maeda go out there every five days and give up two home runs. I Flaherty, Flaherty, I, I don't mind that signing at all. Is it the greatest signing of all time? No, that's insane, especially because it's uh, April 21st. And that was <laughs> it's been three and a half weeks. It, it was and said it's already the break. greatest. That's the worst part. It was, yeah, yeah, it was said during spring. I mean. What what is he? I don't even know what he's making. I haven't looked it up. But what, 14? fourteen. Okay, so it's one year fourteen. Yeah. What what a great value for a guy with injury history. You know, all kinds of issues off the field, and we've heard we've heard things about what kind of teammate he is over the years. How, how would you even come to that that type of conclusion? That's insanity. Um, he could be good though. He could be good. Uh, he's got he, he can pitch. I mean, healthy, like he can pitch. It's a fine signing. I have no problem with the signing. I have a problem with people saying it's one of the greatest signings of all time. But that's a smart Scott Harris type of move. I liked when he settled down yesterday and he got all those swings and misses. Uh, yeah. Friday night. That, that was like, right, oh, yeah. this, is, this is a little bit of what we saw. I love what you said about Matt Manning. Because, listen, Matt Manning at one point in time was one of the poster childs for the failure of the Alavila regime, okay? that doesn't preclude him from being a major leaguer. I'm not I'm doing what I detest. I mean, you and I talk about this privately all the time. All or nothing. So, or great. Yeah, and or great. Like There's people, no middle ground. Yeah, people for... Matt Manning might have a place in the major leagues. I don't think yeah. he's ever going to be that stud that so many people portrayed him to be, but I don't think that precludes him from being a part of this pitching staff in the near future. He's 26. All right, he's 26 years old. We sat around and waited for him for a long time, if you recall. We were mm -hmm. saying, okay, when are we going to see this kid? They're never going to call him up. And that seems to be the weird thing about this organization. They take forever to call a lot of these kids up, especially the pitchers. And I don't know why. You only have so many bullets in that chamber as a pitcher. And it seems like this organization waits around forever to call these kids up. Career 4.30 ERA, career 1.24 whip, 11 and 15 overall. These are his career numbers. That's a major league pitcher. It, is it great? No. Can yeah. it get the job done? Yeah. You know, if, you're, if you have a decent offense, can it get the job done? Absolutely. We've seen guys win 20 games with that profile. 4.3, you know, I'm talking back in the 2000s when the ball was a little more juiced than it is now. But still, 4.3, 11 and 15, you know, 1, 2, 4, that's not a nightmare by any means. So that's why I, just, I still don't get why you would sign Maeda. It's a huge risk. You're, you're paying him for two years, so it's not like you're going to DFA him anytime soon. Um, you're stuck with him for, for probably until, what, July? I mean, he would have to be a disaster to get DFA'd, sent down, 
you know, put on the IL. I don't know, but it's a problem that you have to run him out there every five days. It is. I want to get to something that uh, Tim Flynn said because um, Botch, he Hang said, let me, "Let me take a breath. Let me take a breath." Okay, maybe that okay. new guy on um, the sports radio station is right. We're way too easy on the Red Wings and way too hard on the Tigers. I would adamantly adamantly disagree with the guy on um, the new guy at 97.1, and I'll tell you why. The problem is we're looking at two different time frames, okay? Right, So right. anybody with half a brain in their head knew legitimately it was over in 2014, okay? Yeah. Really and legitimately, and you and I went through with this with a couple media members in town going back to 2015 and 2016. 16. I'll just sit back and enjoy it. Remember that yeah. whole routine? But definitively, you knew by 2017 it was over, okay? You, yeah. you yeah. knew it was over. And right. then we entered that period where for three years straight, 17, 18, 19, you had so many people telling us that fill in the blank was the catcher of the future. How many catchers of the futures did we have? Wait till, you see, have one. wait till you see that guy. Wait till you see this guy. Wait till you see that guy. And, and one of the things that bothered me is how lazy people were because I don't think they took the time to look up what these guys were and right. were not doing. They were going by word of mouth for a lot of cheerleaders on Twitter, quite frankly, okay? And if you don't believe me, I can find the video of this. My pal Mike and I, during the whole COVID thing, okay? We started doing it in 2019, but during the whole COVID thing, made a video in the mm -hmm. pouring rain where we were pleading with people, open your eyes, this Alavila guy's a disaster. Yeah, There's nothing there. That it was window dressing. They, they look what we just did. We got this high draft pick and we got, it was, you looked at all these wonderful things in the window, but yeah. there was nothing there. Guys, that whether people want to admit it or not, I couldn't give two craps. I lived it. I got killed for people. Stick with hockey, stick with, stick with college football, all that crap. Okay. Mike, it went on for two more years. Yeah. That. So you're talking about a period legitimately. Let's let's in the interest of being fair, from 2016 until this present day, we're still waiting for the Tigers to even become mediocre. And with the Red Wings, again, the clock started when Steve Eisenman took this job over. It did. So it's it's a much longer period of time. And whether people want to admit it or not. Steve Eiserman hasn't promised anything, and Al Avila and his minions would shout anybody down and call them a hater unless, you, it, it, in, unless you accepted that all these names, and, and you and I used to keep lists of these, <laughs> unless you accepted that all these guys yeah. were just going to be studs and everything yeah. was going to be okay. Oh, did he work over the Cubs? Look who he picked at the candy man. Oh, so, God. All of that. Gosh, damn crap. So I think people not only are angrier at the Tigers, there's validity to that, but yeah. I think they take it personal with the Tigers because whether they want to admit it or not, they bought in. They didn't have any right to buy in, but they bought in. And so, yeah, I think they feel jaded and jilted. Well, that's a big, that's a huge factor. It's hope because they came so fucking close yeah they came so close and they didn't finish so all people want more than anything is to believe that they're finally going to get one that's all they want over 40 freaking years that's all they want is to get another one with the wings they've they've cashed in right yeah i mean you've got people that are what in their mid-30s that lived through a dynasty Right. Like you would agree, the Red Wings, late 90s, early 2000s, Absolutely. even into the late 2000s, uh, first decade, dynasty. Nine, they, three players in and out. they were the franchise in the They National were the Park. franchise. Yeah. yeah. So you've got people that can appreciate all of that stuff. So I think that's where the Wings are going to get more of a quote unquote free pass. I think fans are starting to get frustrated over the five years and, you know, they want to see more. I think it's also different that you have Steve Eiserman at the helm. Okay. He's going to be able to dodge all kinds of bullets because why? Because he's Steve fucking Eiserman. 
Mm-hmm. Right. That's why yep. you've got this necklace toad in Alavila who was no more than a yes man for Dave Dombrowski for God knows how long comes in, gets handed the job for no apparent reason, you know, farts all over himself for seven years. And, you know, it, I will stand by this was a worse general manager than Matt Millen. He was worse. I will stand by that until my dying day. Al Avila did more damage to the Detroit Tigers franchise than Matt Millen did to the Lions franchise. Stand by it. It's a different sport. NFL, you can turn over your roster within two to three years. Baseball is not the same way. Once you're, you know, pot committed in baseball on these quote unquote names and all these draft picks and prospects, and you're making these God awful trades with top of the line franchises like the Houston Astros, you're screwed. Okay. You you got to you get a phone call from the Tampa Bay goddamn Rays. You hang up the phone. You don't take a mental patient in Austin Meadows and hand them Isaac Paredes, who is a legitimate major league player. The guy can hit. And for power, the Rays pick up the phone and call you. Hang up the phone. Why are you answering the phone? If it says Rays, hang up. Don't take the call. They're trying to screw you. They know something is wrong with Austin Meadows. And sure as shit, look at that. You make a deal. And he comes, oh, I'm crazy now. I can't play baseball. All right, never mind. I mean, that, that was, if, if there was going to be a grand finale for the Alabila regime, that was it. You can't find me. I mean, with the shit trades that that animal made over seven years, you will not find a more crazy. fitting deal than that one. And you know Tampa call. Oh, you know. What about this Paredes kid? You know, he looks okay, but he's really not doing much for you. The guy had been up here for, what, two weeks? Yeah. And, and a couple hits? Well, we got to get rid of him. He's not good enough. Meanwhile, they'll sit on their ass and watch these guys flail around for two years. Jake Rogers is hitting 077 right now. Did you know that? He's hitting 077, catcher of the future. That's yeah. what we got for Justin Verlander. We got a catcher that's hitting 077. I, that, the worst trade ever. Dude, you know, history. you, you know, I was pleading with people. I, I was pleading with people. I said, please go back and look at these trades. Dude, you know, there's so many of you people that listen to the radio show or, or even when I was on Woodward, I got killed for it. I like, I honestly, I felt like somebody put something in our water or something. It was like Batman. Somebody <laughs> put something in our water and the scarecrow was like telling people that, that Al Avila was doing a great job and was going in the right direction. It was insanity. It just kept yeah. going. Um, Rizzo said the Wings gave us four cups, so in my opinion, they got the benefit of the doubt. This is the first time where I'm exactly. starting to get patient. Troy yeah. Eber with, Weaver would like a word with you, Mike, about Avila being the worst. You brought up something. Different. I have said this forever, and I have used my son as an example. And sadly, don't get angry with me. I can use you and a lot of people as an example, okay? When I was growing up, I hated hearing about the 1968 Tigers. I right. hated it. I knew <laughs> everything about that team, okay? It was pounded in my head. Yeah. Literally, from I knew everything about the. I wasn't born yet, okay. I knew everything about the gosh damn 1968 Tigers, and then 1984 happened. Mm-hmm. And I like, I'm not joking. I even told my old man, okay, cool. Every time you start with with the 1968 Tiger bullshit, I can now say 1984. Right. Hey, isn't this right. great? And everything. You have generations of fans. Many of them now in their mid 40s, okay, who they're tired of hearing about 1984. They want to know when their payoff is. Then you have the kids like my son, who had a blast in 06 and it was great in 11 and 12 and 13. And then 14, he started to get worn down and he's tired of it. And then you've got a whole new generation of kids, 10, 11, 12, that have seen nothing but rap with this franchise well what do you want people to say when 40 years later you are still trotting these guys out there and i mean no disrespect to those guys tip of the cap thanks for the memories it was awesome it was great but how many more of these reunions does your generation for example have to go through mike if i have if i have to listen to todd jones one more time on these broadcasts I'm going to lose my mind. Okay. Todd Jones, Craig Monroe, you're bringing back guys from a group that failed. 
they didn't get the job done. Other franchises are bringing back champions, guys that were won MVPs, guys that were all-stars, guys that won multiple rings for the franchise, former managers, former base coaches. I don't care. Somebody involved with the organization that won something. I've got to listen to Todd Jones and his four and a half ERA come on the broadcast every two weeks for what? Yeah. That reminds me of how bad things were. What a nightmare the 2006 World Series was. What a train wreck Todd Jones ended up being. I don't want to, I don't want to listen to these guys anymore. Win something so you can invite these guys back that actually want to ring. It's bad enough with the 84 guys, as you said. We're still listening to those guys, Gap. And I got to listen to Todd Jones and Craig Monroe, you know, guys that didn't win, guys that probably lost the World Series or the worst World Series champion in the history of the game, in my opinion. 82 and, and 80, right? Weren't they like 82 and 80? It, it was like, I think it was 83 and 79. I'll have to check, but it was really close to that. They were barely above 500. But again, the point being, like, I don't want to listen to these guys, man. Like, it, it's been a long time. It's 2024. I'm listening to guys that didn't win a World Series. 18 freaking years ago? Why? why? I don't want to listen to that. Rizzo said that's a problem with the Tigers. They got nothing for JB, JD, even Avila. And he said, that's me with the 84 Tigers. I feel for you guys. I'm I'm serious. It's not that they didn't get anything. It's that the trades, timing-wise, made no sense in the first place. You traded JD Martinez a week and a half before the deadline. You traded Verlander with a year and a half, two years, two and a half years left on his contract, which people will tell you, by the way, oh, his contract was expiring. No, it wasn't. He had two and a half years left. You and I are charter members of this club. Tim Flynn, I don't know if you know this, but what you just said is music to both of our ears and one of the most mystifying things that I that I have seen in this town in 10 years. And I listen, I, I've obviously covered sports here my whole life. I've been in this crappy business for 29 years. This is one of the most mystifying things to me. Mike, did you, I, I don't know if you saw what Flynn said. I didn't. Dombrowski raised the Tigers from the ashes. Al sent them back there by doing, undoing everything that Dave did. The, the anger and, and the, the revisionist history about the Dave Dombrowski era is one of the most mystifying things. I will yeah. never figure it out. I'm, not, I, like, I'm done pretending to try to figure it out. And, and having human beings, even after the, the, the complete failure of Al Avila, still trying to downgrade Dave Dombrowski, when you go back and look at the Fister deal, for goodness sake, right? I, I mean, I, we could go on and on. Uh, Flynn, honestly, that is up there with one of the most mystifying things. I, I don't get it. I don't understand it, but it is. Do you think that was more of a media smear job once they sent Dave packing and they kind of did their best to kind of say, okay, here's the new guy. This guy didn't want to do what Mr. I wanted. So they, they, they kicked his ass out of town. That's kind of the vibe I get, which by the way, Dombrowski immediately goes and wins the world series in Boston, immediately sends the Phillies to the world series. The second he goes there, he gets fired in Boston a year and a half after winning the world series. What's going on? Why do people fire this guy? Like why? The guy turns I mean, he turns shit into gold wherever he goes. It's going to cost you, right? It's going to cost you a few bucks, but he does. Yeah. Uh, Let me tell you about our friends at uh, Legacy. And I'm going to say it again. You have nothing to lose. You got to reach out to these guys. It will cost you nothing. As a matter of fact, you'll end up making money. Get this quote. Reach out to these guys because thousands of Metro Detroiters have already called Legacy Partners to get help with their home, their auto insurance. This is what these guys do. They are one of Southeast Michigan's top independent insurance agents. They provide a full-service, one-stop solution for all of your insurance needs, personal and business, large and small. Legacy has helped our listeners by fixing mistakes other agents have made, asking the right questions to get the right coverage put in place to properly protect you, and yes, of course, save you money. Chances are you haven't checked your policies in the last year, you're paying too much, and you could be underinsured. What are you waiting for? Give Legacy Partners a chance to help with your home, your cars, life insurance, Medicare enrollment, or your business insurance needs. Call them today at 586-209-4106. That's 586-209-4106. Or visit LegacyPartnersINS.com. Get started with your quotes. Tell them that we sent you. Seriously, uh, 
the people that help us make sure that you help them as well. And in turn, they're going to help you. So it's a win-win situation for everybody. Give my friends at Legacy a call. I, I am so, it is so funny just thinking about that. I'm so glad that Tim brought that up. The whole Dave Dombrowski thing, especially Mike, sometimes you don't stop because you're focused on, you know, what has been recently. Right. You compare those errors and in fairness, okay, let's be fair. We had a different owner at the time too. A, a, a guy that, you know, we I, I used to make the joke all the time. Wakes up in the morning. You know, I'm in the mood for eggs, Benedict. I'm going to go throw a, a whole bunch of money at Victor Martinez as well and just pick yeah. him up on the side. It's a different scenario now. Right. There's no question about that. But it is amazing to me how, it, it, listen, it doesn't happen as much, but there's still some people out there that go, well, in the interest of being fair, Look what the Tigers have now, and, and Al Avila's fingerprints are all over it. That's that's a positive thing. Is that is that where we're going with? Wait, wait, so what? What part can if we you look have at? a job? Oh, yeah. If you have a job for seven years, yeah, you're you're going to hit on a couple guys here or there. But the overall sentiment is you missed out on basically every trade you ever made ever. That's yep. the kicker. You're trading. All stars, MVPs, you know, guys to go elsewhere and kick your ass. That's all you're doing. Right now, they're 22nd in payroll in Major League Baseball, and that includes paying Javi Baez $25 million to be a zero. And you're you're not you're not going to compete doing that. I mean, you're not going to compete seriously. You might make, I mean, you could sneak into the playoffs like in Arizona and make a little run and cute run. You're not winning the whole thing. So until they're ready to start being serious about spending money and entering that top 12 of Major League Baseball payroll, whether that means, you know, Riley, here's the other problem. You're, you're going to have these guys that you drafted in the mid-teens that are going to come up for, for cash pretty soon. You're going to have to start making some tough decisions about this, this entire roster. Am I going to pay a Torkelson? Am I going to pay a Riley Green long term? Am I going to pay a Casey Mize, these other guys that you drafted? I'm positive that everybody thought the process was, we'll be further along now than we actually are. That's yep. why we'll bring in a guy like Hinch. We'll bring in these other, you know, kind of side pieces like a Mark Canha and these other guys. I'm, I'm sure that's what went into the Austin Meadows trade, right? At that time, they said, okay, we can add a former all-star and plug him in right field. The, you're adding, a, you're putting band-aids on bullet holes. I mean, that's really what you're doing here. Um, they don't have enough to compete right now, in my opinion. And the problem is that clock's going to keep ticking and you're going to have to decide, do I want to pay the guys that I have in house or do I want to go elsewhere and bring in some free agents and actually get serious about competing and being a top 12 payroll? Because until you do that, you're not competing for shit. Nope, that's, a, that's exactly it. A um, couple more orders of business that we have to take care of. Let me tell you where we are going to be on Thursday. Uh, we'd love to see you out there as well. Of course, the draft is descending upon Detroit, and we are going to be hanging out at Batch Brewing. They got a busy week. They got an NFL trivia thing on Wednesday night, kind of prepping you, of course, uh, for the draft. Then round one watch party. We are going to be out there. I'm going to be hanging out from 5.30 on, but we're going to do the show live from uh, 6.45 until 8 o'clock. Michigan homecoming tailgate on Friday. I know my buddy Lomas Brown is going to be hanging out there. Rounds two and three watch party. Great spot. No doubt about that. Uh, all weekend long. Not just all weekend. Go out there anytime. It's a great spot. It's located in Corktown. They've got tremendous beer, tremendous menu. The smokers are always rolling that that around that place so you make sure that you get down there and at the very least check out batch brewing company 1400 porter street uh in corkdown check out what they have to offer at www.batchbrewingcompany.com mike you touched on this earlier and um i i think a lot of us were always worried about the Indians, oh, I'm sorry, the Guardians, uh, be, because of their former manager. You know, that that was a, that was a guy that, you know, you got to give that guy some respect. And, and, okay, he's gone. Say what you want about the tribe, and I can't stand him. Like, honestly, that, I, I can't stand him. I know you, you feel the exact same way. 
how they continue to hang around and do what they do with what they aren't spending yeah. it is is exactly the point that you were just talking about. They seem to be able to hit on their mid-level guys. Yep. They, like the, the Naylor boys, they're not super high-end guys as far as prospects are concerned, but they, they get on base, they hit. You know, their offense ain't great, but they've got a decent pitching staff. They've got, you know, pretty good young pitching. Unfortunately, Bieber's out for the year, so that's a problem. But McKenzie seems to be be coming around a little bit after injury. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But they're winning close games. They've got a great closer. They, they run the base as well. They probably have the best third baseman in baseball. We'll see. I, we're still incredibly early, and a lot of these one-run games are probably going to flip the other way at some point. But that right now, they look like the class of the division. We'll see. I don't know. Kansas City looks good. They're not that far. And, and I mean, how depressing is that? Because I don't care what anybody says. People jump the gun about the Royals in 2011. Look up the Royals. <laughs> we would call them Coochie Coo and pinch your little cheeks. It didn't happen in 11. It didn't happen in 12. It didn't happen in 13. But eventually, you know what? The... It eventually happened. And, and yeah. can you imagine winning, completely bottoming out again? And yeah. then going back to the top of the division in the entire time that it's taken the Tigers just to try to get mediocre again, 500 again. I, well, it you're would gonna be in my stomach. You're going to love this. After the Bobby Witt extension, where would you guess Kansas City ranks in payroll for 24? Where would you guess? 25. They're 20th. They're ahead of the Tigers in payroll. Is that crazy or what? Because they have a superstar. We don't. Yeah. We, the Tigers do not have a superstar. And unfortunately, that's what it's going to take to get there when you are a small market team or whatever we're saying these days. I, I, we weren't for, what, 15 years, we weren't a small market team. Suddenly, we're a small market team now. Isn't that interesting how that happens? Yeah. Uh, let me tell you about uh, our friend, Lindsey Broadwell, before we get out of here. And Mike, I thank you as always. You're going to get lots of meat tomorrow, okay? Oh, oh my favorite. When it's time. <laughs> To buy a house, sell a house, both, whatever the case may be, you need to contact the agent that I recommend. And that is Lindsay Broadwell. Your house is probably the biggest investment you'll ever make, and that's why you need a pro. Lindsay grew up on the mean streets of Northville and has expanded her team all over Southeast Michigan. She is an expert in all facets of the business. And when it's time to move, Lindsay and her team will make sure you get the most out of your house and everything goes smoothly when you're finding your new home. Buyers, sellers, first-time buyers, doesn't matter. You reach out to Lindsay at broadwellhomes.com and she will help you with everything from start to close. Licensed Realtor at Real Broker LLC. Start your search today at broadwellhomes.com. Gary Schultz, yeah, I'm sure he's getting over, said Mike loves the meat. Get wood. What do you want me to argue that? I can't. Your, your meat is the best meat. Dave said the same thing. Sean's meat is my favorite. Thank you. I love meat. Uh, Blake said, Mike, are you coming to hang out with the boys on Thursday? I might see you there. Sounds good. Will the Schultzes come out too? I just you'll have to ask them. It isn't a party until both of the Schultzes come. Will the Schultz come? We'll see. They're, they're... Oh, now you ruined it. There's inside jokes here, guys. Uh, always a pleasure. Let's do it again soon, bud. Absolutely. Hey, I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll all have right. my meat. I'll see you in the tomorrow. All right. Hey, maybe we'll have a drink too. <laughs> Botch. I'm Sean Belizean. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're literally going to be talking during the hockey games tomorrow too. Yeah, I'll we'll just do this. Crazy. I don't know why any of you would want to join that, but like you're going to see, we're going to be talking during the intermissions of the games and, and eating meat and basically. Beautiful. You. You're the king. <laughs> See you, bye. Off the air with Sean Belegian, featuring Sean Belegian and Blake Matrizak. Produced by Todd Losey and Blake Matrizak. Executive produced by Sean Belegian and Todd Losey. Theme song, incidental music, and related sound effects are from Play It Loud by Jam Studio. Engineering, mixing, and graphic design support provided by the unsyndicated podcast team. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Off the Air with Sean Belegian on all your favorite channels.
While you're there, be sure to rate and review the podcast. Got something to say to Sean? Call the unsyndicated hotline at 248-237-3257.